That was someone's fantasy, wasn't it? Argyle is about an author, Ellie, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who writes a famous espionage fictional series where the titular character Argyle himself, played by Henry Cavill, is the mascot and protagonist. She's revered for the research she puts into her books, and now maybe she's coming too close to some sort of dark secret. This unleashes a top secret agency that is now threatening to chase her for the rest of her life, a mysterious and charming hitman who fights to save her life, and a wacky, goofy, non too serious spectacle of an adventure with many twists and turns throughout. Flashy, fun, and silly. A little bit long, and some of the jokes don't quite land with me. At times, the movie pushes the limits of its absurdities, and it borders on stupid. Fun depending on your definition and palette. It essentially becomes National Treasure meets Mission Impossible hindered by writer's block. Some of the running technical gags and bits, however impressive and neat, are played out and drag things on. Many of these elements do serve a purpose, however, I wonder if things could have been thought over a bit and tightened up. The movie's action-packed for sure, albeit a lot of it, a majority of it, feels awfully generic. That is until Matthew Vaughn finally goes off as he normally does in the final acts of his films. The first half of the movie I was engaged, but also... eh. It feels very quirky, especially with Bryce's character and many moments throughout. Bryce Dallas Howard's character Ellie seems a little eh, especially in the beginning. She's very whiny and she's very quirky, and I can see her character being the type that could grade on the patience of some viewers. However, I do love the creativity behind the way the movie portrays her perspectives of things, of her geekiness versus the real world operatives of her world, of her real world. We're very much in a lonely nerdy girl's head who's got all this creativity going on and the weight of the world around her ready to crumble in on her at any time. I find that I like her character much better in the second half after a couple evolutions in the story. However, I still found myself constantly zoning out and nearly dozing off. Hell, there was a family in front of me and there was a certain member who was reclined in his seat, right in front of me, right to the side, snoring loud as hell. Every snore was a jump scare. However, his jump scares helped me tune back in. So there's that. There's almost four sections of the movie and each section you're in, you almost don't even know what the hell is happening anymore. <laughs> There's a lot going on and there's a lot to keep track of. However, none of it's overly complex. It's all simple and even a bit predictable. A lot of the twists can, you can probably see a mile away if you are willing to think it through. And I know the director, Matthew Vaughn, loves his century filling wacky action in his movies such as the Kingsman movies. There's a lot of neck breaking, a lot of Batman moves being pulled on people, a lot of Matthew Vaughn ways of brutalizing the human body, but no blood. Violence? Yes. Lots of gun fighting, lots of gun firing, but no blood. Some of the action feels more run-of-the-mill, has a bit of a generic feeling to it that's left to Sam Rockwell's Aiden to liven the mood with his it is what it is, I am what I am, what are you going to do about it kind of attitude, and that, that kind of kept me in. Brian Cranston visibly enjoys playing the villain Ritter in this movie with a little bit of his Malcolm in the Middle charm, like Malcolm in the Middle meets Heisenberg a little bit, but like more on the silly side. And Samuel L. Jackson plays a mystery character. And honestly, it looks like the film crew came in at his vacation spot and just caught him on a really good day. So what is this film? A slightly overlong rom-com with a stutter on the com? I felt proud of myself when I wrote that. An espionage comedy thriller or an indulgent power fantasy? Is it perhaps a something as a day movie? An overlong date movie. It's not what I expected. It's definitely not meant to be taken that seriously. Now, if the better of the wacky spectacle moments leading up to this point in the film were the movie self-indulging, then what is about to occur next is the movie letting itself go. Now, in the trailers, you'll see a clip of a scene in the movie where they're throwing blue and pink smoke bombs in a hallway. I think it was that scene my brain finally clicked and admitted, yeah, this is probably a date movie after all. Now I notice mostly couples going to this movie and during my times of trying to catch a ticket and catch a seating, I noticed all the auditoriums were open and empty. There was nearly no one going in, where at first I was panicking trying to hurry up and get in on premiere day. I learned I had nothing to worry about, so I took my time and chose a seat that gave me enough space to write notes and focus at my own will. 
However, there was a family that sat directly in front of me, and there was a specific person in that family who decided to fall asleep halfway through the movie and snore loud enough to wake me from my grave. Yes, even in the auditorium that I was in, there were a lot of couples. It was just, it was that family specifically that I wasn't expecting because like I said, I was checking all the auditoriums for a couple days and it was mostly just twos. It was mostly just duos, just pairs that were taking seats. Now there's a sequence towards the end of this movie that I feel like is gonna be very divisive for a lot of people, depending on your tastes and depending on how, and depending on if you've left your inhibitions at the front door and came in with your brain ready to sit it on the side seat next to you. If you're willing to do that, great. We are here to have fun and do not think too much more of it. If many of the sequences leading up to this point in the movie before were attempts of the movie trying to throw caution to the wind, this sequence is the movie proving that it does not give a fuck. That's right, I'm talking about the oil skate scene. Now, if you've seen the movie already, you already know. I don't have to say anything. So what did I actually think about the movie? Thinking to make a good date movie. Spoilers. There's a scene where she's being explained that she was being brainwashed and the scene shows a laptop being opened up to her in the hospital while she's in a hospital bed and there's this hypnotic pattern being played and that's paired with these false memorabilia that are brought into her as well as a notebook that was apparently hers when she was a teenager and she's held on to it for all this time and there's already entries inside. Now, when I saw that, and apparently she took the notebook and added to it and I assume she looked over what was there before and believed what was in the passages. However, how do you get that far? How can you not tell that that is not your calligraphy? How can you continue to write on passages and not be able to tell that on the flip side of the book is a completely different writing style unless well, we're talking about a movie as outlandish as this one. Who knows? Maybe they had somebody trained to study her calligraphy and copy it and her mannerisms and whatnot. Who knows? Maybe. There's a scene towards the end of the movie where the characters take time to realize their own bullshit. The movie takes time to realize its own bullshit. I'm sorry. The movie calling out its own bullshit does not excuse it of its own bullshit. I don't care if it's a dumbass comedy. I don't care if it's a dumbass film. I don't care. <laughs> Diversion did it. I didn't let it slip then. I didn't let it slide. So those are my thoughts on Argyle. Now, I think this video is going to end up being a little longer than some of my other videos and reviews. I hope that that's not an issue. And let me know in the comments if you like this sort of direction, if you like longer reviews and... Uh, if there's anything else I'm missing that I should be hitting with these reviews, uh, maybe even if it's something with the lighting, uh, if it's not good or it needs to be tweaked or something, please let me know in the comments and uh, leave a like and let me know that you appreciate what I'm doing here. Stay tuned for more. There's plenty more movies coming out all the time and I've got plenty more things I might want to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> smooth, real smooth. Professionalism. If you made it this far into the video, I thank you. I wanted to take a little extra time with this video and the makings of just to kind of make sure that this video felt worthy of uploading. You know, we learn as we go. Thank you guys for sticking around. I hope you guys are having a good day. I think that's going to be it for me. Until next time, peace.